Hi, welcome to another episode of Extreme Narcissism TV, The Inebriation Nation. This episode's another one of me uh, looking at stuff I did. I, found, I I had a bunch of files. I'm just gonna. I picked this one. I know it's all art. No naked girlfriends. Sorry. Uh, they wouldn't make it on YouTube anyway. This was one of my. One of my. I'm just gonna be. This is a miscellany. This is part of a thing I uh, pitched that they liked. They wanted to change. Uh, these are my two main characters: a little boy, a little girl. They had their favorite place to hang out. They live in the desert. They're cactus kids. They live in the desert, and their hangout uh, was a blue log, and they would just go there. And in this particular little scenario here, they were upset at each other because it was about friends. And then there was their dog they had. This was a town dog. Again, it's a cactus dog and the kids hanging out. I wanted it to show, like, this is what it would look like. It was animated, you know? I had a whole little presentation and all stuff. This one, this background is swiped. I want This background is swiped from a Flintstones Golden Book. I mean, it's not the same. I did what I wanted with it for my purposes. But I kind of was learning. So, and I wanted to learn that technique of the old Flintstones cartoon. So I kind of totally swiped this from a Flintstone sleepwalking thing and I took Fred Flintstone out and put uh, my character in. <laughs> and then there, there's the two main characters again sitting on their uh, special log. Oh, yeah, okay. That's me sidewalk painting. Oh, that's good though. Because you can see, look, I'm just using the cheap student paints. It's, they're like four ninety nine, five dollars a tube, whatever, sometimes on sale. I don't drink that stuff anymore. I was doing drawings. I was doing sidewalk paintings. This is a sidewalk show. There were some other examples of stuff I did. This from years ago. You know, and you see some of the stuff from other sh uh, uh, show art I showed you. Um, yep, just more cactus stuff. That's on a piece of cardboard. Just me playing, like, oh, what, what, I, what colors do I want to use? This was just an experiment, and I sold it. Anything, I, I made it, I treated everything like, do it like you could sell it. Oh, oh you've seen that before. That's the uh, dolls they made to sell. Yep, I wanted to get in on the high fructose juxtapose. Uh, designer vinyl, grown-up 20-somethings buying stuffed animals and plushies, whatever the hell they call that shit. I was early on the wave, and I had a thing going. But every time I ever got any juice, I realized I didn't want the thing. It wasn't like I had fear of failure or didn't want to commit to a project. It was just like, I don't want to be responsible for this. But now I'm proving that I made all this bullshit. You know what I mean? Like, not that I don't want responsibility. I just don't want to be responsible for this. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to be like, yeah, that's the guy that made this. I just wanted to get by. So when it, I was like, Ugh, you know, maybe now I'm older. Maybe I just let it be a money thing if it ever did, but... I don't know, like, I'd be putting this out into the world, which I already did, but... Imagine if, say this thing was a hit, like, seven years ago. Ugh. I would have been that guy. <laughs> that was just one. I used that icon for a lot of different things. I would, you know, crop it and use the, the dog presenting his shit. Look what I made, pride. Uh, and these are just these fairy paintings I do on a little piece of, like, 5 by 7 all these paintings are small, like they fit inside of an 8x10 envelope. Little paintings on small little pieces of wood. Uh, not masonite, but wood. All these ones here. And then I would just stick them in an 8x10 bubble wrap, double mailer envelope, and they weren't going to break or get messed up or whatever. They had to bubble wrap around them. And even if I got only $10 for them, it was worth it. This was me learning about, from. there's an artist called Richard Scarry, did children's books. And this was me, uh, you know, learning his technique and then adding my own kind of stuff in there so I just had this background forever and it just laid around on a little piece of wood and I didn't know what to put on top of it so eventually I just put this little gnome on and then put it on eBay or Etsy or someplace else and sold it uh, that's just a sketchbook thing of some kind of symbolic thing or whatever the drawings terrible but I was trying to cram it on the page the emphasis was really on the seed coming out of the stump with the halo I don't know what the hell it was supposed to mean Oh, this is just like another thing to sell. I just did like a bunch of Green Man paintings because it was just faces. I thought, can I sell these? Yeah, I guess so. I sold them all, but I really wasn't into them. They just look like demon faces or something. And then again, I would just always paint these little impy things. That's my old signature, not to admit that it was me. You know, come up with a fake name. Um, this Again, just these little little squares. 
This is little like five by sevens, four by fours, five by fives, whatever. They're all odd sizes. I would just use scraps of wood as long as like, you know, didn't have to sand them down at all or too much. I would just make, I would, I would let the piece of wood dictate the painting. This is my sculpture stuff I did. I'd sculpt them in white clay, assembly line style. Just like, you see how they're all sort of similar? And then by the, then I uh, douche them in brown paint, solid brown. I think I use brown ochre or something like that. Or like coffee brown or espresso green. Whatever those cheap 50 cent art supply stores are, I'd co cover them in that. And then I'd dry brush on different lighter colors. And then I'd come back in with red to give highlights on cheeks and stuff. And then I'd even go back in further and I'd add color to the clothing and stuff like that. It's another video I did. And there's this again, me on the sidewalk. I, I did a lot of this other art is in another video I saw. Yeah, there I had a book. This book here. And it was just all oh, you could look through all my artwork and stuff. And I was doing stuff for people. There's stuff I had to paint on, I guess. Um, well, I guess you can also get an idea of some of the size of some of these. Again, always scamming. I did. I, I know I did not pay full price for any of these big canvases. There's no way. There is no way that I paid full price for a single one of them. Uh, this was an icon I used all the time for things because I thought it was cool. I use it for my podcast, the SoundCloud thing. I gotta update that. Ugh, I'm so behind. I didn't think. I don't know. Ugh, pff, whatever. <coughs> That's another one of my characters from something else. I just did a painting of them, just on the fly. And then I sold it anyway. Um, this, I forget what this was about or for, but I think there's another one similar to this I did where I just used the same, I just used the same template or frisket or whatever I had and laid that down and drew it and then painted it a different way though. I've had like, it's the same, I have like two versions of the same painting. I guess what I mean. Why? I don't know, it's a waste of time. So anyway, this is part of my cactus show. There's like a fly bandito guy and there's, you know, whatever. Um, that uh, is a rabbit character, Lucky the Rabbit. Can't really use that though, that's already a serial character. Uh, just my other character for a book I did. I did a book with that character. And this was the t-shirt designed for like a sloppy t-shirt. It just kind of go in the front. It actually did, there was t-shirts made of this. If I have any photos of it, I'll have to show. And it was just enthusiasm, enthusiasm, enthusiasm. It's from a sketch that I just dropped paint bucket in. And it kind of made for a shirt that worked, if you like that kind of thing. And I had different colorways for it. Um, this is just a sculpture. I, I think I made this for a girlfriend for Valentine's. And, uh, you know, I, not just, but she got that too. She appreciated what I made. Yeah, see, there's the other one I said. Like another version of that thing I showed you before. Some rat in a tree. Uh, there's another one of the dolls. Like an alien, creepy alien thing. Uh, here's a sleeping one. Yeah, these had like felt faces and like gingerbread cookie cutter bodies. And here's a whole bunch of them, you know, like getting ready to sell them, have photographs. Uh, there's a portrait of a dude. Um, that was, is an illustration, but there's a glare on it. It's a baby salamander with its mom. And that was a, that's, this is a big painting. I had like old frame, like a thrift store frame with like um, you know, like a landscape print in it or whatever. So I just painted over top of the print with this image really big, real quick, and sold it. That was self-portrait I did years ago, the cartoon of myself. I think I sold it to somebody, but uh, you know, they didn't, I, they didn't know it was me. Um, <clears throat> this was me just testing out like neon colors and stuff and seeing what I could do with them. So I made this weird balloony background with skulls and stuff. Oh, this one. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know, it's a monkey man. I forget what this is for. Uh, yeah, that, there's some labor went into this one. This is more involved. Um, this was uh, actually in a show. This is big. This, again, is one of those... I took, um, like, hotel art. Or, you know what I mean? Like, those huge, big frame things. And in inside they have, like, like, from the 60s or whatever... And they have like a big landscape or a mountainside or whatever. Well, whatever it was, I just painted over it. No, actually, this one I popped it out. I used the frame. I used a frame from some kind of hotel art, which was like a gaudy frame, which suited this. 
I wish I had a picture of it. And then I cut a piece of masonite and I put this whole image inside and it's big. I mean, this is like, um, like over three feet big. And it's basically an illustration, but God, it was such a pain in the ass to do because I think there's more of it. All this stuff, like I drew everything first, right? Big. And then I laid color in and sort of painted it. Then, without losing the drawing, I had to go back in because I wanted it to look like an illustration. I, I, I did this with a brush. Like I painted all this black and everything. All the outlines of the illustration I painted with a black brush. This took a long time. And it was in some kind of show. The gallery probably isn't there anymore. But this went to a show in New York for sale. Nobody bought it and it came back. Eventually I got rid of it. Uh, this one was just Halloween time. Get stuff ready to sell. See if I can sell paintings at Halloween. I did. You know, because then people can use them as decorations. I used my fake name. Um, this is a Garbage Pail Kid. I, I always liked the John Pound. I even know the name of the artist who did those. Because as soon as I saw those Garbage Pail, you know, like way back when they came out in the 80s, I, I appreciated that guy's artwork. I was like, what is going on with this guy? This is like a crazy, like a funny thing to look at. But they're really gross. So I just thought, like, I couldn't remember what a garbage pail kid looked like. So I just drew, like, a cartoon. And I was like, what? He's just got his head is exploding with blood instead of hair or something. I don't know. <laughs> and this was just, like, to make kitchen art or cute stuff. Like, anything I could think of. Oh, yeah, I think there's going to be a whole phase of, like, weird food art. This was one where I had a friend do backgrounds for me. I had somebody do the... You're going to see a whole bunch of ones that just have, like, boom. It's a blue background, red background, yellow background, green background. And then somebody would do those for me, bang them out. I gave them a couple bucks. And then I would just paint the whole thing on however it took. Now, this one's more labored over, but it was easy to do because I could, this was small. This was probably, like, a 5 by 7 or something, but it just only looks big because you're seeing it blown up on the monitor here. This one I did. I know who has this one. I kind of like to get it back. Uh, just because of this is like I learned something with this one, but this is like a Valentine. <laughs> I, you, you can't see the whole image, but it's like a Valentine of like a busty Swiss Miss girl or something like that who has this like froze look on her face, which I did kind of as a joke and gave it to a girlfriend. She's an ex now, but wasn't at the time, and it kind of this kind of was her. <laughs> and and I I just like deer in the headlights look because you know you know I, I, I I'm not gonna get into that, but anyway this one. Uh, it was a log. This is a character I had from a comic strip that I wanted to paint him. And then I sold it. I, I think I got a, like 75 bucks for this. Um, but yeah, he's just a log head guy. His name was Logbert. And uh, he's a character that was... Uh, it looks better. He looks better as a cartoon. When I tried to make him realized in 3D, I just went for creepy. So it just looks weird. But he was just like a little... He's a log man in my cartoon strip. He represented things. He was a cactus man. I sold this painting in a gallery show. I forget what I got for it, though. But, yeah, somebody took that one. Creepy cactus, dude. The painting of the cactus guy was really good. It doesn't do it justice. That's an X. Um, that's, yeah, one of my shows. A Younger Me. Years, oh, it's way back. I was a little boy. Um, yeah, that's... I sculpted that. It's a bust of a head to scale. I had to use a... a you know, measured out in pickas, the little, I mean, with calipers and all that shit. And there's some of my other stuff back. This is, I think was my show is coming down. That's not mine, it's somebody else's. They were getting ready. My show was coming down, unsold stuff. And then this was coming in, I guess. And yeah, more stuff. That's all my stuff on the walls. That's mine. Um, this was in, this, this was in, like, in one of those stores where I was selling dolls. Oh, that's mine too in the background. Yeah, I did that. Um, but there's my dolls in the little, you know, little, um, you know what I mean? A little bohemian shop or whatever you call those places. Not a head shop, but like little, you know, expensive things all made by guys like me. Little artists and girls making little kicky clothes and baby doll teas with glitter on them and shit, whatever the hell. Anyway, this is my assembly line. This is part of my one man assembly line. What do people like? Skulls. So I went for the, um, you know, what was it popular at the time? That show. Like the 50s wearing the flame shirts and hot rod shit. So I gave him a little stupid hat. 
and the skull guy and the dumb look on his face. And there's a lot of these. A carrot face. I just had fun with these. These are Denebri. You're gonna you're gonna be able to tell that a lot of these should have the soundtrack of Ice Castles by Ween. I should just be playing that right now, but I don't want to stop the episode. But it, I did make a video where I played my, I played this music and I had it up on YouTube, but I took it down because they said you're using somebody else's music. So I was like, all right, I took it down. But Ween's Ice Castles it goes great to this because this to this to me this kind of art you're gonna see coming up, all these weird cartoon carrots and food people and heads that are plates of food. These are denebriation things. These make me think of sick days home from school. These make me think of medicine head. And no, I was not a Caesarep guy ever, not one time. I don't know anything about that shit. But it just, these paintings make me think of it. It makes me think of Ween's Ice Castles. But I'll put it up on DTube with that song. <laughs> um, yeah, another cactus man. Or I think it started as a watermelon guy. And then this was, this, this was a watermelon head guy. And became the first cactus man, maybe. Because I just put these little hairs on him, like whiskers. And I was like, oh, he's a cactus. And then I gave him the little, weird little cactus hands. And I did this so assembly line. This is so easy. The, the cheap paints. I had somebody laying the colors. Then while it was still white, which you can't see, I just took in like a little bit of white paint. They laid in the blue. They just did whatever colors I told them to. Left. And then I came back and I laid in wisps of white to make clouds. Then I just laid in, blah, slap, 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 slap. I just did it all with the brush. Laid in the yellow. Laid in the white. You can see how sloppy it is. I kind of did it off register on purpose. So I did these sloppy on purpose. And then in the end, the last touch was I had a bamboo brush filled with ink, like permanent black ink. So all these out are outlined with permanent black ink. So it's all paint, like the cheapest acrylic paints. Then outlined with the black ink and then sprayed and plasticized over the top uh, so that, you know, it's going to last for as long as a thing like this needs to exist, which will be, you know, your entire stay in college for your dorm room, and then you can throw it away or give it to your little cousin or something. This one went for a decent amount of money, my hot dog man. I held on to this one for a while, just because I liked it. This is just horrible. You know, it's just gory. <laughs> yeah, this one. I think that was in a show. All these are sold. All People bought all this stuff. Uh, if I if I come across one I still have, I'll say so. But all this stuff sold. Yeah, just some weird germ. I don't know. Uh, just this is just some of these are big. Some of these are like apartment pieces, you know, like oh look at the wall. What is that, man? Man, I lived in an apartment building where I did this one. Where I took a Nirvana quote because I was a douchebag at the time, and it was the quote was I hate my oh wait I hate myself and I want to die. So I did this cool painting like it looked like a you must be this tall to get in a ride. And I had a cactus man and a little bear in the desert. And it looked like a nice sunset. And the cactus man it looked something like this. But his whole body was there. He's standing there with one eye waving at you. And his caption was, I hate myself. Or whatever the Nirvana lyric was. I, I hate myself and want to die. Or something like that. And I, and I just wrote that in there. And when I moved out of the apartment building, I just left that there. So I wonder what it was like. Because I put it on the attic. So there's this huge standing thing that looks like an amusement park ride thing. I don't have a picture of it, I don't think. Oh, I have to find that. i got to have pictures of it somewhere. But anyway, um, there's like an amusement park. You must be this tall, but it was about suicide. And I, I, thought, I, was, I thought it was very funny. I just imagine somebody finding that has no interest in art or my sense of humor at the time, which really isn't funny. It's like a wicked thing to laugh at. But this is big painting, actually. Um... But yeah, this one I kept for a while. But anyway, if somebody find that thing in the attic? I wonder. Probably just some like old, kind, elderly person. Yeah, like see how look at this. There's a head that's the plate with a hot potato on it and some peas. I knew enough. I knew enough not to put faces on the peas. It would have been too much. This was just all these, all these MF food paintings. All this. I saw Masonite. I would get the big sheet at Masonite. Go to Home Depot. Go to Mace, I, I get the, the cutting tool, make sure you have plenty of blades. I mean, I just have a jigsaw now, but at the time I was broke, it was cheaper just to get the blades. And I would just score the Mace and I, shh, shh. I will measure it with the T-square, get the T-square and all the tools you need, measure out how big I wanted them slices. This is like probably like a, a, a something by 12 one or something like that, like a little bigger size one. Not that big, obviously. But, um... <clears throat> 
<clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, I lost my train of thought. Anyway, yeah, a lot like this. Another one. This is a barnacle. <laughs> I sold this one. This was on a scrap piece of wood, like whatever I could find. Pretty big. Irregular size. Uh, this was a, I think this was like a shelf piece, actually. A shelf piece. Again, SpongeBob SquarePants influenced. Uh, the colors don't show. I said this before in my other episodes. I make, I make vib, I pick vibrant colors. I make them stay that way. And it looks good at what I'm looking through, but since this is like on a monitor through a camera, and now you're watching it, the, the quality is so degraded. Uh, that was, this was like, this is my, um, I didn't know about Da Vinci's, um, that he had the Mona Lisa or whatever he kept working on. This is my painting I kept working on when I was learning how to paint. I kept going back to this for some reason. It's terrible now and you can see all the things that are wrong with it. But for the longest time, years and years ago, I kept going back to this painting. But now I've decided to just like, okay, we're done with that. I'm not going to go back to it. Uh, just, yeah, just scraps, just junk. Just like basically a watercolor with acrylics on a, on a piece of masonite. So what I do is I cut the masonite with an exacto blade and then paint everything white first so that the colors pop. You want the colors to pop. To, well, I want them to be bright. This was a favorite that I kept for a long time until I needed money and I sold it. But I kept this one for me because I liked it. The colors are really bright. It looked cool to live with. And it was like, I called this character Fark Feldstein. And he was a collision between Fred Flintstone and uh, the Jetsons. Uh, Fark Feldstein. Yeah. It was, he was a combination of George Jetson and... Um, Fred Flintstone, who was a cowboy who had a horse, and his horse was a gay, his horse talked and was gay, and his name was Sugarfoot, or something like that, and, but the horse was like a gay intimidator guy, like he was like a, a kind of character I'd never seen, he was like a gay creep, oh, here's one of my poo paintings, I'm just going to pass by this one quick, but I said another, I, this was a scam I had for a while to get by, I was mad at somebody, we got into a whole thing about South Park. I said, what do you want me to do? Combine the shit with the kids? Oh, well, I said, why is that for... This is Why are adults watching a thing where kids eat shit? Like, what, what's going on? I, I, like, I was bitching about South Park. So I said, what, do you, what should I do to make money? Should I just paint paintings of kids eating shit? And everybody laughed. But they were like, you should. And I did. Just to see... Just to be like, fuck you guys. Now I'm going to sell it. Like I said, here you go. Now I'm going to put it up and put it up for sale and see what happens. Man, it became a, a cottage industry for me. To do these stupid paintings like this, of the like different, you know, kids eating poo and little talking turds. I just made, I just started doing these paintings like portraits of poo with faces that were cute, but I can't put them up on YouTube. That one I think is fine to show, but the other one's not. I can't make a YouTube of them. Uh, this one was painted on the back of like a, a sign from a street, you know, like don't park here or no parking, whatever. Uh, you can see the holes. So this is metal. This is on the back of a metal street sign. So it's that size. And the background is a poem, like I just mentioned from the Nirvana lyric. It says, I hate myself and want to die. Tomorrow I'm going to kill myself. Oh, I was combining two things. I was combining that stupid Royal Tenenbaums line and Nirvana. And here's another barnacle cactus thing. And here's another king shit. Get it? And he's like got flies surrounding him. I made a bunch like that. And all this is is just slap, have the background painted. Then I swapped in some, uh, slapped in some yellow in the background to mix it up. Then I painted on top. Boom! I didn't even draw it in. No preliminary drawing. No pencil. I drew it with paint. I'm like, boom! It's gonna look like a pile of poop. It's gonna be a turd. It's gonna have the crown. I did it all with the brush. And then I outlined the whole thing because I didn't care if it was off register or off kilter. Then I outlined the whole thing with the ink, and then spray plastic on top. Here's another. This is small. This is like a 5x7, or not 5x7, because you can tell it doesn't look like that, but this, that was like a, fits in a bubble mail envelope, I remember that one. Same thing, fits in an envelope, this is a 5x7. Oh, this one was painted on wood, I made this for myself. I don't think I ever sold, I think I have this. Um, it's my character, Idol Albu, it has a whole history to it that I'll, I mean, it's personal. Uh, this was like one of my first paintings, where I was like, oh, I think I could do this. Like, this is like an early developmental thing, where I was developmental and painting when I was like 30 or whatever where I was like oh I think I can paint because before then I was basically just doing illustrations and stuff and this one's big it's a long painting it's like um, I don't know like three feet long at least if not taller oh and this one 
I think I sold this one for a decent price. I think it might have been a, ga a gallery show. This one I still have. This one's in my studio still. It's hanging up. Um, I have this one too. This one's hanging up. Um, I really like this one. This one's influenced by Gary Panter. So is this one. I don't know. I, well, the cactuses and the Mexican theme. I want to have a little boy. And the dog. And... It's ugly. This is huge. This is a piece of masonite. When you go to uh, Home Depot and you get one of those, I forget what size it is anymore. But when you go to Home Depot and you just get the whole sheet of masonite before it, I would cut it into pieces, I said, I'm just going to do some big ones. Which is, This is basically just a cartoon that I painted, but it's big. It's like, I don't know, however big those pieces of Home Depot masonite are. Like three feet by something, right? So this is three feet by something. And so is this one. And I just want bright colors. And all, I mean, this register, this comes across good because the colors are so bright that it registers. And this is influenced by Gary, not Gary Baseman, Gary Panter. I like Gary Panter's artwork. And I like the colors he used because I think he grew up in Texas. So he uses like these oranges and purples. And I think I was trying to learn something from Gary, uh, Gary Panter from this one. And that's why I still have this one. Although it's just a cartoon. It's just a cartoon of a kid in a sombrero walking a donkey. And another cactus person. Uh, Easter bunny. Easter painting. Uh, this was just like a... I don't know, like a sassy magazine. Uh, this is on a piece of wood. You know, like, it looked ugly on purpose, but it was ready to hang. Like, I had a thing in the back and just, boom, hang it up in your shitty apartment with all your, like, scrunchies from Delia's or whatever. This one's big, too. That's, like, over three feet tall. Uh, this is small. It's like a f 8 by 10 probably. Um, y you see what I'm doing here. Uh, yeah, this one doesn't have a black outline. This one was more involved. I just picked different color for everything. So there's a couple like that. It's like a different sort of technique for a cheap and easy panning. But this is more intense and more labored over. And it's for my cactus project, my little Cartoon Network thing. This is again for my little Cartoon Network thing. I think this was on painted on a pizza box. Uh, this was painted on one of those like cheap cam like pack of canvases like oh I'll just try painting some of these like, student canvas things it's like a board with a canvas like glued to it or however that works and it's stiff and it doesn't bend so I did do something like this but what I found was it wasn't as fast for me to paint on because it was actually made to be like a canvas material so it took more time and more paint and I was like nope so masonite so other materials so I, I you know I did to do a bunch with this material and it does look better there's more of a quality to it, but that's because I had to labor over it more, which wasn't what I wanted to do. This is not log work, but this is one of my... I had these ideas of, of characters that were people that were like lumbered wood <laughs> beings. You know, they all had like stick hands and stuff, and they're all like deformities and stuff. And there's a close-up on that. And there's a painting of Jesus. I did a bunch of paintings of Jesus. I could just do a reel of those. Not because I'm a Jesus freak or anything, but I... There's something about I get a kick out of painting him. I don't know, and he doesn't look the same when I paint him. Now this is definitely more traditional Jesus, but it's not like I want it. Like this doesn't come out. Like I, I don't have this anymore, so I, I just sold it. But I would like to be able to go back here and finish it. His mustache is finished, and the neck. It looks like his neck ends here. That's what I like about it. It needs to look more like. It needs to be more clear that that's his hair. This needs to go away. But anyway, um, oh, that's the other half of that that painting you saw before that looks like a huge illustration. It basically is a, oh, so, sorry, it basically, it basically is a huge illustration, but, damn it, me, sorry about that. It basically is a huge illustration, but, oh, that's uh, somebody, that's oil paint, that's uh, 8 by 10 I did sell it, but I can only show this part of it. It was a nude. Um, this is on a gallery wall. Um, oh, wait. See this in the corner? This picture over here was the study for the thing that said, like, you must be this tall to, to see this ride. That little thing over there in the study, and the words were written on the sign there, and then it had, like, the, ch the, the chart. But that was just a study for it, so I didn't write the inches or anything. I just wanted to see the composition. So anyway, a study for a bigger painting that I left in an apartment 
became uh, something I got rid of at a gallery show. Eventually, I sold this for definite sure because I don't have it anymore. Um, again, that's from a show. That's me working on that particular painting. Um, oh, this one I kept forever. This one made the newspaper when I had a gallery show. For whatever reason, they cribbed this image. I don't know why. But this ugly, crappy slice of bread made the papers. <laughs> There's Carrot Man again. Barnacle guy. Oh. Now, nah, we've seen all these before. But it's not the end of the show. So, what else can I say about them? I don't know. I know we're coming up on a bunch of stuff. There's some new stuff. Go back. This one is painted on wood. I don't know. Just like weird germ. Like I said, I'm just making stuff up. I'm trying out technique. Like it just little brushes of color to add more detail to the background. So what's quick, but looks kind of neat. And it gives that weird sort of 1950s like Bill Ray background stuff. Like, I mean, it's a crude version of it. But, you know, this one's a little bit more involved because I did paint the brown around the edges. But I like doing it, so I didn't mind. I think I got more for this than the usual thing like this. Just because I wanted to keep it. So I was like, I'm not selling it unless I get what I want. So I did. This one I still have. I could show that in a video. It's like hanging up in my studio. Um, this was a workspace I had at one time. It gets to show you all the cheap paints I used to use. Oh, there's the there's the watercolor painting and then the cell that laid it on top. And this is some of the stuff's in other videos. Um, so yeah, there's all my art supplies and stuff I had. There's. <laughs> Another version of that same thing that you saw before. It's more grosser. You can tell it's like more labored over. It doesn't look as good. Oh, this is just a little uh, like five by five little piece of masonite. I had a frame for it, popped it in. Got a decent, decent price for it because it's the kind of thing that goes good in the kitchen or a hallway that somebody can have in their house or place or whatever. It just kind of is neat to see there. Like put it in a bathroom or something. But anyway, yeah, there's a whole bunch of my stiffs. But yeah, we'll just, I don't know what to talk about anymore, so I'm just going to go through them kind of quicker. And if I feel like stopping on something, I will. But yeah, this is just a miscellaneous of stuff. More, I have more. I'm going to show stuff, I'm going to have to do a video, that, like or I just show physical stuff that I still have in the studio. I'm going to round up a bunch of stuff. I'm going to go, uh, try to think if anybody knows has any stuff. And I'll just, hey, I need to borrow my thing back to make a video. Yeah, there's paints. Yeah, look, I'm just using the cheap, the cheap student paints, you know. That's all like $4.99 a tube, I think, was the usual. And you could always get them on sale sometimes. $2.50 or blah, blah, blah. Three for blah, blah, blah. Or use the coupons, whatever, go back a couple times in a week if I need a certain color. And they're good. But, I mean, I know how to use other materials. I can use oils and everything else. There's some examples of that in here. Like, I, well, there's the example of oils. Um, I don't know if there's any other oils in here though. I know I have more oils, but not, not, I don't think I saw any here. I would have pointed it out. Yeah, there's just, there's a little, I was like, ah, what, uh, like, I did paintings of these monkey boys. People liked them. So that's another one of those. This probably an 8x10 fits in a bubble mail or envelope. Uh, a little more labored over, but I can tell this is a quickie for me because I can tell by the quality of it. I just like slapped it in and got lucky. Uh, this one's just garbage, but it looks good. It looks good in person because the colors just pop. This is definitely look cool as a black light thing. You know, you have your black light room or whatever. There, that one again. My, yeah. This just from this just sums up a segment of culture I hated then when I did this. It was like this uh, '90s. You know, like the night. It was like Scott Pilgrim people. Like, this was like me beginning to notice them, like, oh, there's like Scott Pilgrim people, like Mission Hill, like whatever, you know? Like, um, you know, hipsters, all that stuff was coming in. It was the, the first wave of it, like, like, oh, this, this is a thing now. This is a type of person now. And what's with the fucking weird mustaches and mustache wax? What are you talking about? Um... And that's not a Gavin McInnes thing. People say Gavin McInnes says he invented the hipster thing. He didn't. It's before him. John Kay. John Kay, like, is a Gavin McInnes before Gavin McInnes. And John Kay was an animator guy. John Kay invented Ren and Stimpy. And he was the guy, before Drew Carey even, with the horn rim sunglasses, trying to recreate the 50s look thing in the 70s, 80s, that John Kay was, like, 
a young 20-something in making his way through animation. Fark Feldstein. I did comic strips of this guy that I used to make myself laugh. I don't think I have a single one. I mean, like, on a file, but not, like, in physical, actually. I could hold my hands. Yeah, he was George Jetson and Fred Flintstone as a cowboy. <laughs> I mean, like, look at him. <laughs> and he was, like, a string bean, tall string bean guy, and he had a horse, but he never rode the horse. The horse was just with him. It was his horse, but he never rode it. And his horse was, like, a gay, intimidator, jerk guy. <laughs> but funny. and Because I knew guys like that, because... For whatever reason, there was a time in my life when I kept getting hit on by, like, gay guys that just wouldn't stop. And I'm like, dude, like, you know, like, I would have to, like, say, this this isn't going to happen. Like, stop. You know, like, when a guy's like, what do you think? Or what? I'm like, I know what you're doing. Like, fucking stop. You know what I mean? Because guys just come on so strong and I can't stop. So, there's my hashtag me too in our episode. I used to get hit on by elderly gays a lot. And I have to tell them to stop. Or, oddly, I don't know why... An inordinate amount, like I can think of five, and that's probably it. Five like plastic surgery gays that just wouldn't, that I'd have to see regularly, that just wouldn't fucking leave me alone. Not like they were like touchy feely, but just like, like stop flirting and just, you know what I mean? Like, that's how you know how you identify with your gender and all that stuff. Like when people flirt with you and it just makes you uncomfortable, it's like, okay, stop. Like it's one thing that somebody says, you know, makes you feel good, and maybe I'm not interested in gay, but somebody flirts, like, oh no, thank you. And then they're like, oh, I didn't know, sorry. You know, I just thought you were thin and neat or whatever Seinfeld said, right? And then that's the end of it. But some people just come on too strong. And it's dudes. It's a dude thing. Women can come on strong too. But that's only when they're older and only when they're drunk. Nah, that's not true. Young girls come on strong too. But I, I mean, more of my experiences with older women just saying, fuck it, I'm going to go for it. I'm not getting any younger. And it's like, no, I don't want to just go to bed with anything. Not like, I'm not saying the, like the girls were just anything, but it's like, I just don't sleep around. And obviously, I'm too busy painting fucking stupid cartoons. <laughs> not anymore. I don't do this anymore. But I do have some hack work that's recent, and I think I'm going to try and sell this stuff again. I'm working, not working on it's really easy to do. I'm going to get a website, I'm going to have a PayPal button, I'm going to sell stuff there. And I'll use YouTube for commercials. And, uh, yep, you know, just going through the motions. Yeah, gifts. I can think of other things. I know I have more sculptures on file because I'm thinking of other presents I made for exes or something like that, like a dog or this or that, whatever they liked out of clay. And some of them came out cool because it was like when you do stuff that's gifts for people, you do stuff for them. So it's not anything I would normally do sometimes. So it takes me out of my comfort zone. It works like that too. Like if you're working a job that takes you out of your comfort zone. Because you don't know what you're doing. And you have to like come up to it. Sometimes it's easy. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it doesn't work. But usually always I learn something. So I kind of like the ones that were of the unusual. <laughs> um, yeah. That, that one. That was a painting. There was a civil rights show. And that one too. It's a, it's a, it's a black guy. And these two paintings were in a civil rights show, and nobody bought them, so I eventually sold them, but <laughs> they were on the sidewalk for sale that day. These were all stuff I, you know, was either had for show or wasn't ready to sell or whatever, but I mean, it was stuff for sale, definitely. I just can't remember. I don't think I sold any of those big ones on the street because they were priced too much. Well, I sold them anyway. They went in shows. You saw them on the walls, I think, in the other photos. <laughs> yeah, this was a little one. I'm gonna done. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna wrap this episode up soon. I think I I tortured enough of this stuff. If you made it this far in the episode, cool. And you can see I have like my own little versions, my own little form of cartoon imp thing going on. And a lot of my painting, all this stuff was just me trying to get better, seeing what you know, and then seeing if I could sell them later. And this was for a pitch, like I said before. This is for my thing I pitched to Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon and everybody else. And there we are at the beginning where I started from. Um, yeah, that was just a hack job painting. You know, there's a lot of stuff like this I was seeing. So, I just did my version of it. And thanks for sticking around that long. Not the best slide to end you on, but, yeah, well, um, it's okay. This is a crappy painting, I know. It's so crappy and easy for me. It's an 18 by 24 for sure. This is 18 by 24 cheap canvas from an art supply store that I got with a coupon. 
and then this is all acrylics. It looks like crappy watercolor here, but it looks better in, in, in for real. Uh, but anyway, that's it. That's episode. Thanks for sticking around this long. Bye-bye.